Well, hello everyone and welcome to another Larry's Orchid Growing Guide. Today we're going to be talking about blooming size cattleyas. So if you're looking for the seedling video, we actually have divided them into two and that video is going to be in a link in the description box below just in case you're looking for that one. But if you're looking for the blooming size one or you already have blooming size cattleya orchids and you're looking to find out how to take care of them better, this is the video for you. So when it comes to growing your Cattleya Alliance orchids, the Cattleya Alliance is a broad spectrum group. It's not just Cattleyas. So that's one thing that I wanna emphasize first. Oftentimes people think that Cattleyas are the only thing in the Cattleya Alliance, but Cattleyas are only a subgroup underneath the Cattleya Alliance uh, group, umbrella group. So you wanna make sure that you know uh, which orchid that you're growing because it may fall under the Cattleya Alliance uh, orchid group. Also, what you wanna do is if you're interested in purchasing any, go to www.larrysorchids.com, select uh, orchids, and then go to the Cattleya Alliance group. And that way you can see all of the orchids that we carry that fall under that category as well. Those will all apply to this growing guide right here. So the first thing we're going to talk about is fertilizing. Here at Larry's Orchids, we like to push our in-house blend here because it is the most reliable and you get the best results, to be honest. That's why we use it. And we like to use what's called a three to one program. And you use three of the Better Grow Green, uh, and you do, do it weekly, by the way. So you use three weeks of the Green Better Grow, and that's the nitrogen rich fertilizer that's going to get the, the orchid growing and healthy. And then you use one week of the purple bloom booster. And so both those can be found at larrysorchids.com. I have a link in the description box below for those as well. Or what we have for people that don't like to have the, the constant maintenance of, of fertilizing weekly, we have a slow release. And this is a 20-20-20. And our, sorry, it's an 11, 11, 18. Uh, and this is the Better Grow as well. And this will actually uh, be able to um, just give you that broad spectrum fertilizer and nothing's really going to be favored, but it's just going to be an overall fertilizer that lasts a long time. So you don't, if, maybe if you're going on vacation, you don't have to worry about coming back and having a nutrient deprived plant. Now the next thing is watering. When you water your Cattleya Alliance orchids, they don't like to be wet all the time. You need to let them dry out. They need to have a drying period. Whereas with the seedlings, they like to be wet. You, uh, well, not really wet, but moist. Um, you need to allow time for your Cattleya Alliance orchids to dry out. As you can see here, um, they are growing in a medium bark mix and the medium bark mix uh, allows the, the water to drain readily through the pot and it also will help the, the plant to obtain some nutrients and water that will stick close to the roots as well. And I mean, as you can see, this plant here is in bloom, it's so beautiful. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is temperature. When it comes to temperature, you want to make sure that the temperature is between 60 and 70 degrees. They don't like very cold nights. However, if you can get um, a temperature variance, we talk about that a lot with these Cattleya Alliance orchids because the way they grow in nature, they have that temperature variance where it gets colder at night as the cold ocean air comes up the mountain. Now, if you can give them 60 to 65 degrees at night, and around 75 to 80 degrees during the day, that's going to be optimal, that's going to be ideal. However, if you can't give them that, they're not going to die on you. It's just what we like to call ideal because here at Larry's Orchids, if we don't give you um, the optimal growing conditions, uh, then I feel like I'm doing you a disservice. So if you can, try that. But if not, don't worry. Now the next thing is sunlight. Give them a very nice south facing window. If you get them in a south facing window, make sure though that you put shades or blinds on. They like about 60 to 70% sun exposure. So that means you need to take out about 30% of that sunlight coming in. And that can be done by putting, um, you know, like I said, shades or, or blinds or shears or whatever you have in your windows. If you put something in front of the plant, that's going to be great. And it's going to keep that harsh sun off these leaves here. Now, a lot of times people ask, what color should my orchid's leaves be? 
and they should be a lime green. A little bit darker than a lime green is great, but a deep forest green, no, 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 no. Not enough sunlight, that's what happens. And so when you have not enough sunlight, your plant's never going to bloom. And a lot of times people say, hey Luke, my plant's beautiful, but it's not blooming, why? And I say, well, what color are the leaves? And they typically say, well, they're pretty dark green, they look pretty healthy. <laughs> and so that's a beginner mistake, is they think a dark green leaf is a very healthy plant. And uh, when in reality, it's just not getting enough sunlight. So that's another thing. And also if it starts turning red, that's called leaf burn get it out of the sun, too much sun. So that always happens too. That's a very common mistake is they put it in a harsh window and the sunlight's just too strong. So um, the, just reading your leaves tells you a lot about the orchids and they're not finicky though. So don't worry, they, they will tell you what's wrong with them and you don't have to have any guessing. So another thing that I'm going to talk about briefly is the humidity uh, because the humidity is pretty important when it comes to growing the Catalea Alliance orchids. They are tropical, they like a humid environment. If you can give them a high humidity around 70 to 80%, they're going to do great for you. However, they like anything between 50 and 80% humidity. Anywhere in between, they're gonna do great. 40%, they start getting a little shaky, so I would uh, suggest maybe misting them to um, keep a humid environment around the plant. Um, or put them in, a, in more of a warmer window that uh, can help keep that humidity up. And that's really all there is to growing your Catalea Alliance orchids. They're pretty simple. And so um, I hope you all have the best of luck growing your orchids. If you have any more comments, questions, or concerns though that I did not answer in this video, please don't hesitate to ask. That's what I'm here for. So. Uh, yeah, so if you did enjoy this episode though and you learned something new, please click the subscribe button. Um, also, I will say really quick before I go uh, that our blooming size orchids are blooming size. That does not mean they're going to flower. Uh, that mean, that, I mean, that doesn't mean they're going to flower, but that doesn't mean they're going to come with a flower is what I'm trying to say. Because oftentimes people expect them to come with a flower and, uh, and they, they won't because we don't ship them with a flower here at Larry's Orchids. If you do uh, want a flower, we do sell them, but you have to check it in store. You have to, you have to actually come to the store because we, they, would, they would be massacred in the, in the shipping process. And lastly though, uh, also with the, the uh, blooming size here, make sure you check the description because if they are in sheath, that is as far as they will go. If they actually start blooming, like I said, we'll clip them off because we can't ship them in flower. Um, but if they're in sheath, we will put in sheath or in spike um, in, the, in the description for you so you know that it actually will come with a flower stalk. Now if it's just blooming size, expect them to flower within six to 12 months and, uh, and that means that it's the right size to flower, it's just not flowering yet. So make sure you check the description, that is very crucial. And that's about all I got for this episode. If, uh, yeah, if you have any friends that are into growing Catalea orchids, share it with them. I think they will enjoy this episode quite a bit. And also if you saw anything on this episode, whether it be uh, the, the pots to repot them, the Catalea orchids themselves, the growing medium, or the fertilizer, um, th all that can be found on larrysorchids.com. So I have a link to those things specifically, uh, but if you wanna check everything else out, make sure you go to larrysorchids.com where you can check every single thing we have for sale. All right, well until next episode, I will talk to you all later. This is Luke from Larry's Orchids, thanking you for making us the number one stop shop for all your orchid and tropical needs. All right, take care everyone, bye.